Hey there people, Hitesh here and how's it going on? I don't know why, I'm, but I'm super pumped up. Hey, so let's get started and talk about our very first semi-test case that we are going to write. Why do I call it semi-test case? Because it's not going to give you anything output on the screen like test pass, test failed or anything like that. Now usually we can do that, but I think in this case it's not necessary. We can talk about something more important, which is known as hooks. Now, when we were starting this series, I told you a little bit about the hooks, that how hooks can be used and can be implemented. And in the example, we can see it's being uh, plotted inside the describe. Surely, that's one way. If you're going to put it inside the describe, it's going to give you terminal uh, output as well. But in this case, we don't want to do that. In this case, yeah, definitely, we will be using describe and it block a little bit later. We're going to get the screen output and the greenish tick mark, test pass, all of that. But not right now. Right now, we just want to focus that how many of them are and what we can use for which purpose. So we can see we have got before each, a couple of them are being mentioned here. If you'll notice and read this documentation, it says before is there. I can zoom it a little bit. There is a before, there's an after, there's a before each and after each. As the name suggests, all of them are having each. The ones that are having the each means they're going to run again and again before any particular event. Maybe just creating the user before all of them, you want to run them. Before deleting the user, you always want to run that, whatever the case is. But the before and after only runs one at a time. So we're going to use one of them before and we're going to write our first semi-test case. Let's go into the code file. There we go. And what we're going to do, first and foremost, I'm going to remove this one. Now, this entire thing, this line number four to line number nine, is entire one thing. So we are just opening up a connection with the Mongo tube, and then that's it. We are just making a connection. So instead of doing that all the time, what we want to do is we want to use this before here. So we're going to simply go ahead and type before. Now, this before is a method. So we go like this. And in this, we can pass on a callback. So for callback, what we do is we go arrow functions, just like that. There we go. Now we're going to hit enter. And in this before, that means whatever happens, this is the helper file, which is going to run for the very first. And we want to just place all of this Mongo connections inside it. So we're going to cut that out. And we're going to just paste it there. Okay. So this is all good. This is all awesome. We can save it. And there we go. Nothing wrong in it. We have done all good and amazing thing here. But there is something more, which is a little bit hard to find in the documentation. And that something is known as the latency, you can call it, or you can call it as delay as well. Now, you might have noticed in case you have designed any application or you have taken any of my course, I, I say this all the time, that whenever you make connectivity with the database, it's never instant. It always looks like that we were able to access the data very, very fast and always instant, but it's never the case. Whether that you are using a local database in your mobile phone, maybe SQLite or something, or maybe a database which is far on the other side of the planet, that's also the same case. Because database is a heavy duty machine. Whenever you make a connection, it's always going to take some time, probably one millisecond. Uh, that's really fast, but maybe a little bit more. Sometimes it takes time. So when you're making a connection with the database, you're asking, hey, are you awake? It says, yeah, I'm awake. So then it's trying to make a connection and gives you back some feedback. This is always going to take some time. And whatever the test we are going to write in the future, maybe you are making a test for update a user, and even your connection is not being done. If your connection is not being done and you are making update in user, it waits for a certain time and it says fail. But your, connect your test actually doesn't fail at that time. It was not able to perform the first task here, and you were forcing it to do the second task. Of course, it makes sense. So we have something in the Mocha that allows us to perform these things. And then this actually keeps on chaining based on what you're writing. So without any wasting more time, it's actually much more easier. What you have to do in all of these before, and in fact, this is going to come up quite a lot, there is something known as done. So first and foremost, you want to write this done here. Now this done is a method whenever you want to call it, you can call it and it's going to pass on further information that, hey, my job was all done. My test was all good. So what we can do in case of this console.log, I would like to actually cut this for a moment. So I'm going to just cut this out and I'm going to place curly braces, hit enter. I'm going to paste it again and I'm going to comment this now so that you can have it for later on. In this case, I'm going to just call this done here, which is a simple method. There we go. Okay. Now this done is a representation that, hey, I'm done with the connection. Now you can move on to the second test, whatever the test you are writing. Since the helper file always runs for the very first, that's why it's always going to go like that. 
Okay, so there we go. So this is all pretty easy and pretty awesome. So we are done. And this before is an indication that no matter what the test you are writing, I want to run it for the very first. Before any test, I'm gonna be running it up first here. So that's why all the things that you want to happen before, you write it in the before block. And done is a representation that, hey, I'm done, I'm all done, now you can continue and carry on doing all the magical stuff that you really want to do. Okay, so we're gonna save this here. And notice some of the auto formatting kicks in, the done parentheses are gone and this is aligned a little bit. But that's it, that's all what we wanted to do and this is all now a perfect code that we can use uh, wherever we like to. So there we go. Okay, so this part is all done. Now we have done and we have worked a whole lot in the helper test file. Now we want to do some more testing. And for that, we are gonna be using describe and it block. So I highly recommend you to read a little bit more onto the documentation of Mocha and at least have a look what is the describe and how this it works. It's gonna help you in the future video much more. So that's it for this one and let's catch it up in the next video and write our very first test case for Mocha. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.